nestled at the foot of the majestic Wasatch Mountains is Salt Lake City, the capital of Utah, world headquarters of the LDS or Mormon Church, and site of the world's only landlocked saltwater lake. And just 23 miles to the south, the site of the Widowmaker Hill Climb. For 20 years, motorcycle fans and enthusiasts have gathered here to challenge the hill. A perilous climb that has been aptly called the Widowmaker. This, the start of the Widowmaker's 21st year, we look back at over 6,000 participants. And the awesome fact that this event has been won only four times in 20 years, with the winner going up and over the top. The task is to reach highest on the hill. And if more than one rider makes it, it's the best time that counts. is Widowmaker 84. This is the view all our riders want to see. This is the view from the top. I'm Mike Scott along with Ted Otto, the 1965 AMA North American Hill Climb champ. And Ted, we're here for the 21st running of this Widowmaker Hill Climb. Below us is the Utah State Penitentiary. Whatever hell goes down there, real or imagined, it's nothing compared to the 1,500 feet of hell facing these 249 entrants. We're running this a little later in the year this year. What kind of shape is this hill in? Mike, the hill is more dry and the dirt is even more loose. And I think the guys with the heavy paddle wheels are going to have more problem trying to claw their way up this one this year. Besides those equipment problems, they have thrown something a little tricky at the top. Tell us about that. Well, they put a ledge up there last year. We called it the wall and thought nobody would get over it, but five guys went to the top. So the Bees Motorcycle Club this year said, OK, fellas, we'll make it tougher. They put a chicane in. At the 950-foot mark, they have to veer to the left almost 90 degrees, straighten out back to the right, and then go over the ledge. But the passageway is only about 18 inches wide at that point. It's off camber. If they make a mistake, they could slide off into a little ravine and some trees. It's going to be tough. Okay, it's going to take a lot of talent, a lot of guts, and we have talent here. Kerry Peterson is a three-time champion, and uh, who will he be his competitors? Well, Keith Rossler has won this one before. Vince Bertolucci has won it before. Jim True has won it before. They're all here. A guy named Steve Stith has an 1,800cc motorcycle, and a new guy named Tom Johnson. But all in all, in this class, there are 36 competitors, and all 36 of them are really serious about getting over the top of the Widowmaker if they can if they can 36 standing by to do it 20,000 on hand to watch this 21st running of the Widowmaker hill climb and we're ready to go here's roger reed a young california rider our first contestant mike he's on a thousand cc harley davidson you can see as he clutches out and heads up the hill it's horsepower that counts 
and the bottom of this hill has a small trail in it, but a little bit later they get into the sagebrush and that's when they may have trouble and I think he's having some now. Looks a little rocky there as he, yep, and he's up and over, over the handlebars though and not the hill. First contested, 515 feet. Our next rider, B.A. Adams, a local favorite from Layton, Utah. All decked out in his fancy riding leathers. What is that they're attaching to his wrist, Ed? Mike, that's a thong that attaches to an automatic shutoff switch. So if the rider comes off the motorcycle, it will immediately kill the motor. So if the bike comes back down the hill, it will not be coming down under power. All right, he psychs himself up. Looks back, he's ready. Well, he clutches out very well and starts heading up the hill, but he's already dabbing his feet, and he's down already. A short ride. Traveled only 30 miles to get here and only went 180 feet up this hill. Our next contestant, a previous winner. This is Mr. Keith Rossler, getting a good luck kiss from his wife, and Ted, you talked to him earlier. Keith, we see a for sale sign on your hill climber. What does that mean? My last hill climb. Hoping not to take the motorcycle home. Let somebody else beat heads with carry. Is that going to be true no matter what happens, or if you take second, are you going to come back one more time? No, I, I've made the decision this is the last one. Why? Uh, I'd rather spend more time with my family. How long have you been at this game? I started when I was 15 years old. I stopped for a couple years, and then I came back in 81, and I got hooked again. Now I'm going to try to stop again. But you'd like to win it and make it easier to stop, right? Oh, that would be a nice way to go out. All right, here's Keith Rossler from San Jose, California, a 32-year-old utility worker and a 13-year veteran of this hill climb. He won this event in 1981, and he was second last year, but you heard what he said, he'll retire no matter what. He's got a smooth one going as he let the clutch out on that Honda bike, and you can tell the difference in the sound. This is the first one of these that we've heard on the hill today, and it has a very throaty, powerful sound, but look at him go. A smooth rider, that comes with 13 years of experience, and look at that paddle wheel tire throwing up that real estate. He put a foot down for just a second, but got it right back on the pegs. It helps to hold your balance if you can keep your feet on the pegs and your knees against the gas tank. All right, we're coming up to the wall. Looks like he got out of range of the cameraman, but the news cameraman was in the way. I think everybody believed our PR that nobody could make it that high. 1,123 feet for Keith Rosser. Let's take a look at that again. Mike, we were talking about the smoothness of this rider. Look how he stays right in tight to that motorcycle. He's headed through some rough country now, right out into fresh sagebrush where no one else has been. He stays tucked in tight, takes up the shock with his arms and his shoulders, and he rides it as if he were riding to music. Now, here's Tom Elmore, a young rider from Illinois, and he's working that clutch hand and getting that shoulder smoothed out, getting ready to roll, psyching himself up, Ted. Tom's quite a character in his own right. He and his brother have been coming out here for several years. He really wants to win this hill climb, and as you said, he's ready, and he lets the clutch out and takes off up the Widowmaker with a vengeance. You can hear the horsepower of that bike as he's still on the trail where others have been ahead of him, and look at him as he bounces around and uses the shoulders to hold the shock of the bike as he hits the rough spots on the hill. Moving around gives them some more traction also. It also helps get some of the weight transfer back to the back wheel when they need it, or they get off the seat if they think they're getting too much. All right, those paddle tires really turning up the real estate. Elmore taking a look at where he wants to go. He's in the sagebrush, and he's got to make a left turn. Headed for the bottom of the wall. Can he make it? Up on top, but he's going to dig in, and that's about as far as he's going to go. But it's over 1,100 feet. And your bike ends, your run ends, where your bike ends. And Tom's ends up at 1,113 feet. Here's our standings. Keith Rossler, 1,123 feet. Tom Elmore, 1,113 feet. And we'll be back with the Widowmaker 84. Welcome back to Widowmaker 84. 
This is Vince Bertolucci, who first faced this hill at the age of 13, he is now a 26-year-old, and uh, gives him 13 years of experience, and his father's helping him out. Ted, tell us about that. Mike Vince lost his right leg in a rototiller accident when he was a young lad, and his father is lacing his boot to the right foot peg. And he has to ride with an artificial leg, and Vince has been doing very well. He won it once, and he's been second twice. What does that do to his balance? Well, it does put him at a distinct disadvantage. As you watch Vince ride up the hill, he has to stay very rigid on the right side. As he's tied on, you can see only his left leg is dabbing. So if he leans over too far to the right, he's got a problem. All right, and he's getting into the tough ground right now. And you can see he has to use his body over to the right side and extend his left leg. He's off the bike and down, and it'll take a second for him to help him. As you can see, they've got to come over and get him loose from that foot peg. All right, Vince Bertolucci, 1,075 feet. A valiant effort by this young California rider. 13 years experience. He's 26 years old, and he keeps coming back. All right, James Brindos, another California rider. Takes a look up at 1,500 feet ahead of him. Brindos has a large Harley Davidson 1500 cc. He was third on this hill climb last year, and he wants to try and win it again this year. Look at him, challenge the hill. He clutched out and turned on the gas. He's on the move. He's got some power behind him. He starts clawing and churning his way up the hill. Now the rooster tail begins to fly as he gets into some of the loose dirt at the halfway point up the hill. To the dog leg now, the turn that he has to make to the left and up over the wall. Just about. Just to the top of it is as far as he's going to go. This is pretty exciting. We've got quite a few riders who are making up over that wall. That's something that we weren't sure was going to happen. We just need someone to go just a little bit higher. Let's see what his distance is. 1,106 feet for James Brindos, the California rider from Jamestown, California. They're grouping up pretty close there, Ted. Yes, you can see they're running a measuring tape to find out who's got the high point. All right, another California rider, Dave Turner now, an automotive importer from Garden Grove, California. He's on a 1,000cc Triumph motorcycle that he has rebuilt for hill climbing. Look at him as he starts up the hill. He gets the horsepower of his bike going. Again, he has a trail going for him on the bottom half of the hill, at least, where the other bikes have been up ahead of him. Looks like he's got a good run going so far. He does. You can't typecast these riders' eyes also because Dave Turner is a cost analyst. Well, he's analyzing the hill right now, and he's got both feet off every once in a while as he dabs trying to keep his balance, but he's doing very well. He approaches the bottom of the wall, but he's out of motor. I heard the RPMs go, and that's as far as he's going to go. But he did crash that 1,100-foot mark, 1,110 feet for Mr. Dave Turner from Garden Grove, California. They're measuring closely as many of the bikes are stopping just on top of this hill at the 1100 foot mark. They're going to be close together. All right, this is Jim True backing in now. Take a look at this tire in the back. This is a tire that has no rubber. It has paddles welded right to the rim. Exactly, no tire on it at all. And it's also an interesting motorcycle. He made this from two 490cc Yamaha cylinders, and he fabricated the engine cases from aluminum stock himself. So he's got a homemade motorcycle. All right, a 40-year-old fireman from San Jose, California, taking on Widowmaker Hill Climb, 84. He's won it twice. He won in 1973 and again in 1976. So he knows what's facing him up the Widowmaker. True now into the dog leg. He's made his turn, and he is set to go to the wall. And again, he's in the same spot with everybody else. They all just clear the 1,100-foot mark. Okay, he seemed just to power out there at the end, and that's uh, he needs that power back on when he crests the top. Is that correct? Well, they get right there to the wall, they turn off the power to make it over the top, and then they don't come back on. All right, Brad Barner now. California seems to be the uh, the land of hill climbers, and Brad looks up at that hill and uh, assesses his chances and see where he has to go. A number of hill climbers coming out of Central California, and they climb regularly down there, and they've got all year to do it. Probably why there's so many of them there. 
Barner with one of the largest motorcycles out here as far as displacement. He gets 1,800 cc's out of this Harley Davidson, and it looks like Barner's going to use a different approach. He's going to try to use the horsepower and not charge the hill at a high speed and maybe not hit the wall so hard. Must be his approach as he goes up there just at a constant RPM. It's a methodical challenge. Stays in the groove, begins to kick up a little bit of the loose dirt in the trail, paddling a little bit. I'm not sure that's the right approach. I think you need a little bit more speed before you get to the wall, and I think he's about to find that out, as he's probably not going to get too much further. And that's it, right with everybody else at the 1,100-foot mark. They all seem to be bogging right down there at 1,100-foot mark. That's a 12-foot wall, and yep, 1,100 feet for Brad Barney. It's, uh, that's the toughest part right there. But this is the man, if anybody, who has the chance to get over the top. This is Gary Peterson. A three-time winner from your Belinda, California, gets a good luck kiss from his wife. And Ted, you had a chance to talk to Gary. Gary Peterson, your three-time winner and defending champion. But every time you come to the Widowmaker, it's different. Yeah, it is. It's real different this year with that turn in it. It's going to be really tough. What do you think? The hill looks a little more dry. It's quite a bit drier. It reminds me of the 82 hill, and uh, I think traction's going to be a problem, especially up at the turn. Do you think an early ride is going to be important? Not really. Uh, I think when, when it gets uh, burned out at the bottom where you can really open the bike up and gain, up, gain some momentum, that's going to help a bunch. Last year, they had a ledge up there. They said nobody would go over it, but you did, and so did four other guys. This year, they changed it. They put in a chicane. What do you think of the dog leg? It's definitely going to slow the momentum of the bikes down, and these long bikes are super hard to turn, so it's, uh, it's a problem. Are you going to have to back off the throttle in order to maneuver it through that chicane? I think so. Uh, backing off is going to be the only way to get around it. I think if you try to hold it on, you're going to run, run out of bounds, and that, that's definitely a no-no. <laughs> Here's defending champion, Kerry Peterson, 1,500 cc's. Ted, what is the average street bike? The average street bike is about 1,000 cc's. He's got 1,500 in this one, and he's burning fuel, nitromethane, and that gives him instant horsepower when he cranks the throttle. And he's got instant horsepower going for him right now. A rider with determination starting it out facing this 1,500 feet, and he's uh, got some great power going, and he's uh, shifting his weight and working his way through that sagebrush. Well, he'd like to come back and make it three in a row, 82 and 83. He's going for 84. He's got a smooth ride going as he gets into some of the barren territory, but he's a little bit loose. He dabs his left foot. That's unlike Peterson. He likes to keep those feet on the peg. Okay, oh, he's almost off. Nope, he's pulled it out. He saved it as he gets into the dog leg and sets up for the bottom of that wall. Look at him. He dabs over the top, lets off the throttle, cranks it back on, and he's on the roll. He's on his way. When he gets over that wall, he's all the way up going towards that 1,500-foot mark. And it's the fuel burner that does this. He let off to get on top of the hill, cranked it on. He got instant horsepower, and he sees 1,500 feet. Easy as that. 48.659 seconds. He's up and over the top. Let's take a look at it again. Well, as we said, he started off very, very smoothly, headed up the trail where everyone else had been, then picked a new pathway through the sagebrush. And apparently when he got into the brush, he caught his toe of his boot and began to dab a little bit with both feet. He did it two or three times and very surprisingly regained control and got his feet back on the pegs. And then right here, the back end kicks up Forcing the nose down, he recovered just in time to get over the wall. And as soon as he did that, it was history. Mike is with Kerry right now. Hey, watching the uh, competition so far, who do you think you have to look over your shoulder and worry about? Uh, I respect all the guys down there. I think any one of them uh, could be a challenge to the time, no doubt about it. All right, Kerry, thank you. 48.659 is your time, and uh, we'll wait and see uh, who else comes up the hill the rest of this afternoon. All right, we've got one up and over the top. And that is three-time defending champion, Kerry Peterson. In second place, Keith Rossler. In third place, from Illinois, Tom Elmore. And in fourth place, 26-year-old Dave Turner. And we'll be back with Widowmaker 84.
Welcome back to Widowmaker 84. This is a view from the top. A view that has only been seen by one rider. This time, Mr. Kerry Peterson. As we look down on the 20,000 fans who came here to enjoy a day in the sun. But this hill hasn't been fun for all the people. some of Widowmaker's previous winners. What makes this event so special? Well, it's just, it's a challenge, and, and I've been riding hill climbs all my life, and this is the big one. Exhibition and I, I've done good here a lot of times, and, and I just, it's like years. something we look forward to every year. It's its the big event in hill climbing, and, and they only have it once a year. I think it's, it's a tough hill. It's a, a fun hill. And the spectators in a crowd is the main reason. And you get to meet people from all over the, the country. And you got a lot of different stories you get to listen to. I think it's just getting everybody together. You can count on all your friends being here every year. Um, we make all of our strategy, and some of it works, some of it doesn't, but we have a good time. It's a great race. It, it's the best. Uh, it's the best hill uh, as far as excitement, spectators. Uh, it's, just, it's just like they say, it's a happening, and there's nothing like it. Here's the 38-year-old carpenter from Fremont, California, Mr. Don Trent. Surveys the hill, gets ready to make his climb, hopefully to the top. Trent has a 1,200cc Harley-Davidson. When he's not climbing hills, he likes to use his motorcycle as a drag racer. This is kind of a drag, except that it's not very level and uh, a little more steep than he's used to. Ted, he's in and out of that rut. Uh, where does he have to be in this? Well, you don't have a lot of choice now. After they start grinding away on the hill, they create a rut. This one is snaky, looks like a giant serpent up the hill. You don't have much choice except to just try and stay in it. If you get out of it, you're gonna get into trouble. All right, at 38 years old, he has a lot of experience going for him. He's got a lot of power at this point, too. He's riding very well. Look at the rooster tail he kicks up, the debris flying into the air. He's got a good head of steam. He makes the turn and he's headed for the wall. Here he goes, he's up and over, almost. Don Trent, 1094 feet. Here's Ron Standevin from California. Palmdale runs a Harley shop there. He's won this event way back in 1975, and he's been coming every year and has been in the standings almost every year. He's got a 1,200cc Harley Davidson underneath him, too, as he heads for the hill. He's our oldest rider, 48 years old, Ron Standevin from Palmdale. You can hear the horsepower of the bike, and he, too, tries to stay in that slot as he claws his way up the hill. Got a good ride going so far. RPM is good, and look at him hang on. He's got plenty of experience going for him. Coming up to the wall. Here's the bottom of the wall, and he does a nosedive up onto the top, and he's got another one of those 1,100-footers. There's a lot of that going on. Ron Standevin, 1,102 feet. Most of our riders seem to cluster right there. Here's a young man from Provo, Utah, Steve Whitlock. Steve said to me, it is about time somebody from Utah wins this. He wants to be that rider. He's on an 1,100cc Yamaha. Again, you can hear the different sound of some of these engines. He's been riding this for 12 years. And he clutches out and takes off for the top of the Widowmaker. He spent three years building this motorcycle. He said he wanted to win this climb, and this is the first time he's been able to ride his new bike up this hill. 
three years in building it. He needs to beat 48 seconds. That's the time of Kerry Peterson who went up to the top. He's through the slot and he's up on top of the wall and another 1,100 footer. They seem to cluster right there. That's the 1,100 foot mark, 1,108 feet for Provo Utah and Steve Whitlock. Well, here's their final standings. Kerry Peterson, now a four-time champion. In second place, Keith Rossler. Third place, Tom Elmore, Dave Turner, and Steve Whitlock in fifth place. Well, you won $3,500, 25 for winning the hill climb and 1000 for being the first one over the hill. That's not a bad day's work, even if you had to sit and sweat a little bit. No, I agree. <laughs> Kerry, you said it was a, you, somebody would be able to go over the top of this hill today, and you thought it would be you, and you were the only one. Why? It just everything worked out right. It was just a combination of, of uh, hanging on to that thing when I hit the ledge, and uh, after that, it was just smooth all the way to the top. Was a little bit tough getting over the ledge, wasn't it? The ledge was a real challenge, there's no doubt about it. Of course, hill climbs are designed to be tough. Today's course was just that. But I think the fans and the riders had a good time. The 20,000 or so who were here, I'm sure will be back, as will most of these riders. And experience counts, as four-time champion Kerry Peterson can say. For Ted Otto, this is Mike Scott saying so long from Salt Lake City. <laughs>